Very good morning to you, Tim. Um, there, there, there were question marks over Harry Kane's fitness. Tell us, is he out there training or not? Not is the answer to that, Rob, although he's doing some individual work following an individual programme. We'll focus on the players. They arrived out onto the pitch uh, a few minutes ago. Lee Carsley actually was the first one out this morning. He was uh, putting the cones out and getting everything ready for training around about an hour ago. But 21 players on the grass this morning, but the one who is not is Harry Kane. He was substituted, of course, for Bayern Munich against Eintracht Frankfurt over the weekend, an injury to his right leg after a collision. He had treatment before coming off. There is no structural damage, that's the good news. He's undergone tests by the FA medical staff, but uh, not training with the rest of the players on the grass, and obviously that does mean that he will be a doubt for the first of the two games that England have in this international break, the match against Greece at Wembley on Thursday night. But, of course, England do have good attacking options in this squad. Ollie Watkins is returning, having missed the last international camp. And Dominic Solanke in the squad. Seven years potentially between caps for him. We're going to be hearing from him a little bit later on on Sky Sports News at around about 3.30 this afternoon. So it could be an opportunity for one of those players. Uh, of course, Kane wasn't at his best at the Euros in the summer. And uh, that did give an opportunity at times for Ollie Watkins to impress. And I'm sure he'll be looking to take an opportunity if he gets it on Thursday. But the good news is that Kane is with the rest of the uh, England players. He's just not out on the grass. So hopefully he will play a part in, in one of the two games over the course of the next week. Yeah. A nice problem, but one of the biggest challenges facing Carsley is, is something that Gareth Southgate struggled with. That's Palmer, Bellingham, Foden all back. Jack Grealish played as a 10 during the last international break. So how, how does he work all that out? It's not going to be easy for him because it's a problem, as you say, that Gareth Southgate had trying to, to solve that issue and get the best players in the best position. And it, it's something that Lee Carsley actually touched upon at, at his press conference last week when he said it's about finding the right balance and finding who complements who. So it's getting the structure of the, the team right in those midfield areas. But, of course, it was a problem he didn't have in his first camp because Phil Foden withdrew. So did Cole Palmer and Jude Bellingham was injured. So those three players return. You mentioned there that Jack Grealish started both games against the Republic of Ireland, against Finland in the number 10 role. He effectively could become fourth choice in that position, even though he impressed and played really well in both of those games in the last camp. So whether he gets employed in a slightly different role remains to be seen. But certainly Phil Foden, Premier League Player of the Year last year, it's how Lee Carsley can find a role for him in his best position that gets the best out of him. And, of course, man of the moment, Cole Palmer, he's made such a sensational start to the Premier League season. A lot of debate whether or not he's the best player in the Premier League at the moment. And, of course, Jude Bellingham, who has been a talisman for England in the past, wasn't at his best in the Euros, but still scored some really crucial goals. So it may be that he has to drop a little bit deeper alongside uh, Declan Rice. But of course, Angel Gomez played in the last uh, international camp and he did well on his debut. And in the wide areas, Anthony Gordon and Bakayo Saka, we know that Lee Carsey likes width, especially on the left hand side with Anthony Gordon. So it's a problem, a difficult problem for him to have, but a, a problem that does give him lots of options. And uh, I guess it's the problem that any manager in world football would like to have to try and get those players into a starting 11 and, and to get the best out of them. But yeah, it was a problem he didn't have in the last international window, but it will be very, very interesting to see how he solves it in this particular camp. Yeah, it's not the only position, though, is it, where he's got decisions and dilemmas. Carl Walker returns after missing the last squad, but Trent Alexander-Arnold impressed in both matches at right-back. So who starts there now? 
Another difficult decision for him to make. Now, Kyle Walker has been a mainstay of this England team, regarded by many as one of the best right-backs in world football, but he is now 34. He missed the, the last camp. He's had a slow start to the season in terms of returning from a few knocks after the Euros, but uh, he looks to be up to full speed now. And in normal circumstances, you would expect Kyle Walker to start. He certainly uh, did under Gareth Southgate, but of course, Trent... Alexander-Arnold was used by Southgate at times in a, a midfield role and Lee Carsley made it clear when he announced his first squad that he saw Trent Alexander-Arnold as a fullback, albeit maybe using him in a slightly different way to a traditional fullback, the way that he's often used for Liverpool. So there is a decision to be made there. It, it could be that he gives uh, both players 90 minutes, one in the game against Greece and one in the, the match against Finland, but yeah, it's the first time he's had to deal with this issue. But two quality uh, fullbacks who are both playing well for their clubs at the moment, and uh, it's a, a situation that we'll see over the course of the next few days how he how he looks to address that, whether he, he does have a preference or whether he looks to uh, rotate between the two games. Yeah, quite a contrast to the other fullback position. Levi Colwell, the only left-footed defender in there, <laughs> he plays normally as a centre half, but has played. As a fullback, is 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 that where he's going to be? Well, Rob, if only we had Ashley Cole to play at left back. He's he's out there at the moment because he's now part of the setup here at St George's Park, working alongside Lee Carsley. He's been brought in on a, a full-time basis, having done it on a part-time basis previously. So, somebody to lean on with all his experience for Lee Carsley, but. Certainly left back was a, a position that he filled so magnificently for England. Levi Colwell and Rico Lewis have both done it already under Lee Carsley. Very, very different types of players. And I think when Levi Colwell plays, he does tend to tuck in at times as a, an extra central defender uh, when England are defending. But with Rico Lewis, we know that he'll step into midfield and he was neat and tidy and, and was quite impressive actually last time out for England so again it might be that he looks to to rotate a little bit to to see how those two players perform in these games there are others in the squad that could play there if needed Carsley has touched on this but Kaya Saka and even Cole Palmer has played there in the past but it's a, a problem position for England but there are enough options there and although it might not be a case of a traditional left back England do have in Colwell and, and Rico Lewis, two players who can fill that position, albeit they, they are very different types of players. Yeah. Tim, there's been a, a few withdrawals, hasn't there? But as yet, no call-ups. Yeah, well, Lee Carsley called up 25 players to his original squad. He can only name 23 in the matchday squad. He's down to 22 now. Harry Kane not training with the rest of the group today, so only, only 21 on the grass this morning. Let's tell you about the players that have, have withdrawn from this particular squad. Esri Konsa limped off in Aston Villa's draw with Manchester United after only 12 minutes on Sunday. He, of course, started in the, the last game against Finland, so he's missing. Harry Maguire was also injured in the first half of that game, so he might have actually been an option to come in as a replacement, but he's injured as well. Uh, Kobe Mainu, he's been managing an issue and he came off late in the game against Villa. Now he'll sit this out as a precaution. He's played in 10 of the 13 England games since making his debut and he started against the Republic of Ireland in Lee Carsley's first match in charge. So he's also withdrawn from this squad and the other one missing is Morgan Gibbs-White who picked up an injury playing for Nottingham Forest against Chelsea. He was a late substitute for England against Finland. He got some minutes on the pitch but their absence means opportunity for others. England coming into this game as big favourites to beat Greece on Thursday. 23 years, Rob. Let me take you back to that game. England against Greece. That wonderful free kick from David Beckham that took England through to the World Cup in 2002. That was a very, very memorable game. And uh, there'll be some England players in this squad who are hoping it will be a memorable game for them on Thursday as they take their opportunity to impress the interim head coach, Lee Carsley, and to, to make their mark for England. But 
with two games in the space of just a few days and with one or two players carrying knocks, it, it will be interesting to see what Lee Carsley does and whether there will be some rotation between the two matches. Yeah. OK, Tim, wonderful as always. Thank you very much.